but we'll figure it out. You know, change is good. We should never be afraid of change because if we're following the Lord, there really needs to be change because He's bringing us to a place where He is from the place where we are. And in order for that to happen, there's got to be change. And so we can look forward to change with excitement, with anticipation, and no worry whatsoever because the one who created the heavens and the earth is in charge and he knows very well what he's doing. And we've put our lives in his hands and he has a spot for us in the kingdom of God that uh, he's, he's shaping us and he's forming us to fit into that spot just as he needs us. If you've accepted Christ in your heart, he has a specific spot for you in the kingdom of God. And, and that's a pretty exciting thing. And, uh, oh, anyways, that's good stuff. So anyways, we miss Ira. We miss Sonora. She's away in Canada as well. And so again, I'm going to try out this little bit of Bible reading and a song. And we hope you are blessed by it. My prayer is that it will help you and help me too. It, it, it's helping me. Spend that time with the Lord in the morning to get our day started straight. And then we're in more of a mind to acknowledge Him and to worship Him and to praise Him the rest of the day. And that's what He wants from His people. Because that puts us in a frame of mind and heart to serve Him. And to do the things that He would have us to do say the words that he'd have us to say. So the song that I had on my heart this morning is one that we've always loved to sing in church and in our devotions growing up. And especially when we think that we have reason to be sad or ornery or depressed, this song says you can have a song in your heart in the night and it's not just meaning at midnight, but in the dark times of your life, we can still have a song. You know, in the valley, we can still have a song in our heart. Even though things might be pressing on us, we can still sing. And I don't know about you, but songs are a wonderful tool in our relationship with the Lord and in our walk with Him. There are many times where I feel down enough that I don't even know if I could pray. But there's always a song, and that seems to bring a person out of it. So if you are not using the tool of songs, then you are missing out. So this is a song, I hope I remember the words to it. You can have a song in your heart in the night. Every trial, after every mile, anyone can sing when the sun's shining bright. But you need a song in your heart at night. You can have a song in your heart in the night. After every trial. You need a song in your heart at night. All right. Do you know the words yet? If you do, sing along, because I'm going to sing it again a couple times. And the intention is to get it worked inside your brain so that it'll, it'll be in your heart for the rest of the day. You can have a song in your heart in the night. After every try. After every mile, anyone can sing when the sun's shining bright. But you need a song in your heart at night. You can have a song in your heart in the night. After every trial, after every 
every mile. Anyone can sing when the sun's shining bright. But you need a song in your heart at night. Oh, there you go with my morning voice and all. I hope. Thanks. I hope that you now have a song that you can think of the rest of the day. <clears throat> when you're tempted to uh, say an angry word, just sing. When you're tempted to be depressed, excuse me, <clears throat> when you're tempted to think depressing thoughts, you can have a song in your heart instead. So praise the Lord for that. Thanks for singing along. I needed all the help I could get. So today, um, I'm going to be reading from Ephesians 3. For those of you that have not been listening so far, Ephesians is a wonderful book. Many have called it the Alps of the New Testament because it takes us to such high places. And um, it's so encouraging. It talks about the plan of God, not just for you personally, or for your family, or for the church. But it talks about the plan of God for all creation. And uh, it's, it's pretty exciting that in everything that God is doing with the world, with creation, with the church, he has a specific spot for you in the body of Christ. And then it's up to us to be responsible to walk in that and uh, to do our part. And then as the body makes... As the body works together in that way, it makes increase of itself. We're going to read that tomorrow in Ephesians 4. But today, we got Ephesians 3. So if you have your Bibles, follow along. I happen to be reading from my King James, because that's, uh, that's just what I, I like and I grew up with. But you can uh, read in whatever Bible you want. The only stipulation is that you read it in the Holy Ghost. That's the best translation ever, because it is the living word. Oh boy, I have some thoughts on that. Maybe another day. I'll just say this. <laughs> this is not my Bible that I grew up with. The Bible that I grew up with when I got when I was 14 from my parents, it's, it was tattered, it was worn, it was marked with notes and highlights and pen and pencil marks, and it was filled with notes, um, and I love that Bible, but it was not the living word, because that Bible now is laying in ashes where our house burnt six, seven years ago, okay? I love that Bible, but it was not the living word of God. The living word of God abides. It's still living, still speaking. And he is so good to us. So let's read from him. Lord, just bless the reading of your word. And I pray that you would open our ears and our hearts and our minds to the things that you would have us to know. Amen. So Ephesians 3. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when you read you may know my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Wonderful. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Christ Jesus? This is exciting stuff. 
we're being told things that that the, the men of the old, the prophets, they didn't know about. This is, this is awesome. Verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might, by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, Think that's not possible? Verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Amazing. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. What a wonderful plan that he has for all creation, but specifically and for now, for all those who will put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you haven't done that, I mean, there's don't waste any time. There's a, there's no reason to wait. Like I've said before, if you're struggling with something, if you have any prayer requests, there's lots watching on here and our family specifically who would pray for you, and uh, you can you can message us. You can put it on public if you want. But as the body of Christ, we're here for you. We'll pray for you. We'll uplift you as best we can. And we'll work together in this plan that God has for his church. For we are workmen. We are workmen together with him. And that's a pretty awesome and wonderful thing to think about. Well, I hope that you all have a wonderful day. I appreciate spending this time with you. And like I was saying before, I hope, and it, I hope it will provoke you and encourage you to spend the time with the Lord and that it will encourage you to walk uprightly before Him with, uh, and, and be encouraged that He is leading you, that He is speaking to you, and that He is leading you into the way that He has specifically placed you in the body of Christ. So praise the Lord. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm not sure how all this is going to work every day, but um, pray for us as a family in our music and in what we're doing here. We'll pray for you, and we'll see how things go from there. It's exciting times. The best is yet to come, folks.